all of the calculations that we've done so far up until this chapter, we've talked about calculating sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent, cosecant and secant. All of those six things that we've been calculating, they're all functions. And one of the things that we can do with functions, one of the things we can do with functions is we can graph functions. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the sine function and the cosine function as a graph. So this beginning paragraph says sine and cosine functions can be easily graphed. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the values of the quadrantal angles. And if you remember the quadrantal angles, those are the multiples of 90 degrees. So 0, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Those are quadrantals because those are the ones that are on the x and y axes. They're not in a quadrant. So we're going to um, determine the sine of those and the cosine of those angles. And we're going to put them together in a chart. And um, trigonometry is very useful in other areas of science, like physics, and it's also very important in calculus. And there's a lot of trig graphing that goes on in those, in those other subjects. So um, because those are upper-level upper subjects, uh, most of the trig graphing that's done there is um, when, the, when the angles are in radians, not degrees. So we're going to be talking about all of these angles in radians instead of degrees when we do all of our graphing. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at two functions. The first function is called f of x. And this f of x is the sine of x. And then we're going to look at another, I think I'll do these in colors. So we'll look at f of x, which is going to be a blue graph, and that's our sine of x. And then we're going to look at g of x. This is a second function, and the second function is going to be cosine of x. And what we're going to do is graph them down here. So in order to graph functions, usually what we do is we fill out a table of values. These are x and y values along here, so we can graph them as x, y points. So first of all, we're going to fill out, it looks like the cosine is the first row. So we're going to figure out the cosine of all of these quadrantal angles. And if you wanted to just convert these into degrees, 2 pi is 360 degrees. So this is like negative 360 degrees. This would be negative 270 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 90 degrees, 0 degrees, and now we go positive 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. And I just wrote those degrees down because usually it's easier to talk about, or we're more used to uh, talking about angles that are in degrees. So if we want to look at the cosine and the sine of those, we can either pull out our calculator and ask them, ask the calculator, and that's probably the quickest way, or we could look at the unit circle. So I'm just going to pull out my scientific calculator and do the cosine of negative 360 degrees. And my calculator says that's equal to 1. And then the cosine of negative 270 degrees. Quadrantal angles can all be done in the calculator, and that's equal to 0. And the cosine of negative 180, that's equal to negative 1. And the cosine of negative 90 is equal to 0. And the cosine of 0 is the same thing as the cosine of negative 360, so that's equal to 1. You can ask your calculator this. And the cosine of 90, I know that from my unit circle, all of my important numbers around the unit circle. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0. The cosine of 180 over here is negative 1. The cosine of 270 is 0, and the cosine of 360 is 1. So what we have is our x values here. These are the y values here. y is equal to the cosine, or in other words, g of x. And now that we have our x and y values, what we're going to do is we're going to plot those as points on, these, um, on this graph right here. The x values, these are the angles. And these angles are in radians. You can see that um, the x grid has already been filled out in radians. So you should probably put that down. This x is angles in radians. And the y value is all of these values that we filled out. 
And the y value, the maximum y value in this whole line is equal to 1. And the minimum y value is equal to negative 1 down here. So we'll put those on our y axes. And so now we're going to start out way back here at negative 2 pi. That's what x is equal to. And like I said, I think I'll do these in colors. I'll do g of x, which is our cosine curve in red. So we have x is equal to negative 2 pi and y is equal to 1. So we're going to start here. The next point we're going to plot is x is equal to negative 3 pi over 2, y equals 0. The next one is pi comma negative 1. The next point is negative pi over 2 comma 0. The next point is 0 comma 1. The next point is pi over 2 comma 0. The next point is pi comma negative 1. The next point is 3 pi over 2 comma 0. And the next point is 2 pi comma 1. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different points plotted from these x, y values that we just put up here. And when you plot a sine and a cosine curve, you should make this very smooth. And what I mean by smooth is you should have this arc going down. It's like a concave down direction. So start there. And then the next one will be concave up. So it kind of is like an S-shaped graph. So make sure you start it off like this. And then another concave up. So this is kind of like a smiley face down here. And then we kind of, kind of have like a frowny face down here. So be very careful. And, and eventually your graphs are going to probably look a lot better than mine. And then we have a little smiley face going on down here. It bottoms out, and then we have a nice little rounded curve here. So we're going to say this is g of x is equal to the cosine of x. Make sure you label that. Next thing we're going to do is graph the sine curve. And we can, again, go through all of these values on our calculator, find out the sine of negative 360, and that's equal to 0. And we can figure out the sine of negative 270 which is equal to positive 1. So we have a 0 and a 1. And the sine of negative 180 is equal to 0. And the sine of negative 90 is equal to negative 1. So we have a 0 and a negative 1 here. And 0 degrees and negative 2 pi are, are um, coterminal angles, so they have the same sine value. And we can tell from our unit circle that the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, or 90 degrees, the sine of 180 is 0, the sine of 270 is negative 1, and the sine of 360, or 2 pi, is 0. So now we have another set of y values with these same set of x values, and we're going to plot those. So we're going to start here with negative 2 pi, comma, 0, and then go to negative 3 pi over 2, comma, 1, negative pi, 0, negative pi over 2, negative 1, 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi, 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and 2 pi, 0. So now we have those nine points, and we're going to again connect these with a nice smooth curve. So we're going to start out here with kind of a frowny face like an upside down parabola almost. Make it nice and round on the top. And then down here on the bottom you're going to make this nice and round like a parabola that's smiling. And then we got another parabola shaped thing that's frowning. And then another one that's smiling. So now we've graphed our second function and this is f of x. So our f of x is equal to the sine of x. So those are the two basic curves in trig the cosine curve in red and the sine curve in blue. And what we're going to talk about next is the domain, <coughs> excuse me, and range of these, which is exactly the same for both. Now what you should really put on the ends of these graphs is you should put an arrow on the ends because we could actually go back to angles smaller or less than negative 360 and we could go on and have angles that are greater than 
360. So these curves just go up and down and up and down and up and down forever and ever. And then we'll put, um, put arrows on the end of your cosine curve because they go on and on forever. Now the domain and range, well domain is the x values and these x values like I said you could go back and forth forever and ever and ever. So the domain is all real numbers for both sine and cosine and I just like to write my little fancy r for all real numbers. Now the range is the lowest to highest y value. So the range is the lowest value is negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to positive 1. Cosine and sine values never get more than positive 1 and never become less than negative 1. So these are really important things for the sine and cosine. So we'll put a little star there. Now these are repetitive patterns. They'll keep going and going forever in the same pattern, it up and down and up and down and up and down. And this next question says, after how much horizontal distance will they repeat the same pattern? So the horizontal distance, if you can see this pattern for a cosine, this cosine curve starts at the top, it comes up and goes down and then it comes up again. This is a pattern right here. So between here and here, between the y-axis and this um, 2 pi, that is one pattern. This is called the period of the graph or this is one cycle. So I'd like you to put one cycle down. The cosine curve looks like this. It's like a valley. And the sine curve has this kind of pattern. It comes up and down, and then it goes down and up. But this, has, this is one cycle of the sine curve because if you can see, here's another cycle of the sine curve. So between the y-axis and this end, there is one cycle. And between this negative 360 and this y-axis, this is another cycle. So what we've done is we've graphed two full cycles. One here, here's the cup for the, I call it a cup for the cosine, and here's the S-shaped one for the sine. And so after how much horizontal distance is this? Well, this is the horizontal distance. After how, how much horizontal distance? This is 2 pi, because between here and here, this horizontal distance is 2 pi, or 360 degrees. This is called the period of y is equal to the sine of x, or, or and y is equal to the cosine of x. Okay, because these graphs have patterns that keep repeating over and over and over again, they're called periodic graphs. Going on to page 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put coefficients in front of the cosine curves up here and the sine curves down here. All we've done is we've added this 3 or a negative 4 or 3 has. We're just adding a number in front of it. And what this is called is an A. So we're putting a number in for this a. So this is telling us we're changing the coefficient. The coefficient is just a number that you multiply a function by. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our graphing calculators out. Let's see if I have one with batteries here. Nope. So grab your graphing calculator. It's a good idea to put your calculator now for the first time ever in radians mode. And we're going to press y equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to put 3 cosine of x in to our calculator. So just type 3 cosine of x. You don't have to close up the parentheses, but I will. Now there's a really important part of graphing trig functions, and that's the zoom key. So please, every time you graph something with trig, press zoom. And down in option 7, it says zoom trig. So after you press zoom trig, you'll see that the cosine curve that we just graphed has been actually expanded up. Instead of starting at 0, 1 like it did before, it's starting at 0, 3. 
So what they did for you here is they graphed a cosine of curve. That was just like what we graphed in red on the previous page. Remember the red cosine curve from before. Well, what we just did was we put a 3 in front of the cosine curve. So it's kind of the same thing, except it's just much taller. It's been vertically stretched. So this cosine curve starts way over here up at the top. It's starting at 3. So you're going to go up to 1, 2, 3. And then the next tick mark here corresponds with this negative, this tick mark is negative 3 pi over 2. So it comes through the x-axis here. This is negative pi which goes down to negative 1, 2, negative 3. You can mark this as negative 3 and up here as positive 3 if you want. Then it comes to the x-axis again, and then on the y-axis it goes up to 0, 3. Comes through the x-axis here, it bottoms out at negative 3, comes through the x-axis here, and then at the end it tops out at positive 3. So what we're going to do is, in, in red now, we're going to graph this, and we're going to try to, I try to, very hard, make this nice and rounded down at the bottom. So I'll just mark this. This is in red, and this is y equals 3 cosine of x. The next thing we're going to do is y equals negative 4 cosine of x. So the only difference we're going to do is we're going to put a negative and insert a 4 in here. So we've got negative 4 cosine of x and press graph. And what a negative does in front is it turns it upside down, right? Here was, here was what the graph looked like before, but now it's been turned upside down. And it starts now way down here at negative 4. Negative 2 pi negative 4 comes through the x-axis in the same place. Negative pi positive 4 goes to the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, it goes down to negative 4. So I'm going to do this in a different color. I'll do this in blue here. So it starts down here at negative 4. Comes through the x-axis at negative 3 pi over 2. And then it goes up to positive 4. Then it goes to the x-axis here, and then it goes down to negative 4. And then it repeats that pattern again through the x-axis, up to positive 4, through the x-axis, and down to negative 4. And now, if we can make this nice and round down at the bottom and up at the top, round this around so it's not a v-shape. This should be u-shaped instead of v-shaped. So there's your negative 4. The next thing we're going to do is 3 halves cosine of x. So instead of negative 4, I'm going to insert a 3 halves cosine of x. And press the graph button. And this is a right side up one. And now this one, the highest point is 3 halves. Now 3 halves is 1 and a half. So it's still the same shape, except the top point is 1 and a half, and the bottom point is negative 1 and a half. But it goes to the x-axis in all those same places. So I think I'll do this one in green. So back here, you're going to go up to 1 and a half, going through the x-axis at the same place, negative 1 and a half, through the x-axis, positive 1 and a half, through the x-axis, negative 1 half through the x-axis, positive one and a half. And then come down, make this nice and round. And then, oh, I didn't label this one. This, this one should be labeled y equals negative four cosine of x in, in blue. And in green, this is y equals three over two cosine of x. And then we've got one more to go, negative 2 cosine of x. So y equals negative 2. And you can probably imagine what that's going to do. 
It's going to be upside down like the negative 4 one was, but now we're going to go down to negative 2. So I'll do this one in black. So negative 2 starts at negative 2, goes through the x-axis, comes up to positive 2, goes through the x-axis, down to negative 2, through the x-axis, up to positive 2, and down to negative 2. And then curve this around. And now we've got a pretty butterfly looking thing here that we're going to label as y equals negative 2 cosine of x. Alright, now what we have here is a new vocabulary word called amplitude. Amplitude controls the height of these graphs. The only difference between all these graphs is how high they are. And how high they are is actually what this coefficient is. It's actually the absolute value of these numbers is the amplitude. So on this one, the amplitude, and I usually abbreviate it as AMP, the amplitude is equal to 2. Amplitude is always positive. You should write down amplitude always positive. And that's where the word amplifier comes from is the amplitude. And this one, the amplitude is equal to 3 halves. In this one, the amplitude is equal to 4, because the highest point is 4. And this one, the amplitude is equal to 3. So there's your new vocabulary word for this. Now, it looks like this uh, video is getting kind of long here, 22 minutes almost. And what I'd like you to do before tomorrow, please, is if you could do the same thing with the sign curve. This says without the use of your calculator, but I would let you use the calculator. I'd take this without the use of calculator off and just put y equals 2 sine of x and see what that looks like. Looks just like your sine curve did on the other page, except it goes up to 2 and down to negative 2. So you can do that. Actually, I'll do this on the video. You can watch me do this. So it goes up to 2 and it goes down to negative 2, and up to positive 2, and down to negative 2, because the amplitude on this is 2. So this one is, this red one is y equals 2 sine of x. And y equals 4 sine of x. Change the 2 to a 4. And you can see that one is really tall goes up to 4 and down to negative 4. So I'm going to do this one in blue. We always start on the x-axis here. And this goes up to 4 and down to negative 4. Goes through the x-axis always at the same place, up to positive 4, down to negative 4. So this is a tall one. This has got an amplitude of 4. So we'll label this one is y equals 4 sine of x. The next one is going to be negative 3 sine of x. So negative 3 sine of x is an upside down curve. I'll do this one in green. So now it starts going down and then it comes up. So it starts on the x-axis and it starts going down to negative 3. And then it goes up to positive 3 and down to negative 3, up to positive 3. So this is y equals negative 3 sine of x. It's upside down. And then the next one is negative a half sine of x. 1 half. And so this one is an upside down one, but it's really short because the amplitude is only a half. So this, this one is very small. We'll do this in just a regular pencil. So it starts on the x-axis and it only goes down to, it goes down to negative a half. Comes up to positive one half here. Goes down to negative a half here. Positive one half here. And you can label this y equals negative one half sine of x. And that is done with pencil, and this one is done in green pencil. 
And then the only thing we are going to do is label the amplitude. The amplitude on this is 2. The amplitude on this is 4. The amplitude on this is 3. Remember, amplitude is always positive. And the amplitude on this is a half. And there you've got some pretty pictures. So we'll get some more practice with this tomorrow. Sorry this is so long. Have a great night. Bye.